We have aviation analyst Phil Dirty uh, in the studio with me this morning. Thanks for coming in. Appreciate it. Good morning, Jen. Uh, I'm pretty sure I've been on one of these planes, but on Air Canada. What more can you tell us about the Boeing 737 MAX 8? Well, the MAX 8 is the newest generation of 737. The 737 is the most popular aircraft flying today. Yeah. Uh, there's over 9,000 of them built. Uh, they've got orders up to 14,000. Uh, they're a fantastic airplane, and it's just the newest generation of that model. So this plane apparently only in service for a couple of months, according to the reports. What are we to make of that? Anything? Not really anything. No. It was delivered on the 13th of, uh, of August and started an operation on the 15th. Um, so it's, it's had some, uh, some trials. Uh, they've not had any major issues with the airplane. It's just a, a really great aircraft. I've flown on it myself. Okay. They said there was a technical issue, but they managed to resolve it. I mean, we don't have any details on that. No, but, but what we'll do, they'll uh, sequester the logs and they'll go through the log books to see exactly what was done, who repaired it, what was the cause, and uh, they'll go from there. Okay. What we do know is that the plane vanished from radar are about 13 minutes after takeoff. So analyzing that piece of data, what would you, what would you say? Well, I, was, uh, I was analyzing the flight path uh, earlier and uh, basically it reached 5,200 feet. Uh, they did have an issue. They called back and uh, to air traffic control and wanted to return to the airport. Uh, they made a 20 degree turn, approximately 20 degree turn, and then they started into a rapid descent. And uh, when they hit the water, the, what the last reading was uh, at 800 meters, uh, they were at 2,300 feet per minute in a descent and they were doing about 385 knots. Okay, so explain that to me in layman's terms. They were going really fast straight yeah. down, basically. Yeah. Um, and when they hit the uh, they hit the water at a high rate of speed, and at that kind of speed, uh, it, the water is like hitting concrete. Yeah. Uh, and so from the pictures, you can see the debris field, uh, the aircraft just disintegrated on impact. So the importance of retrieving the black box obviously becomes paramount. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, what they'll be doing is, first of all, recovery efforts, getting as much of the aircraft and of the passengers uh, back to their uh, next of kin. And then they'll be looking in and they're honing in on the pinging of the black boxes, uh, the orange black boxes, which is the flight data recorder and the cockpit voice recorder. Mm -hmm. And that'll tell, give them the information exactly what was happening uh, with the aircraft, but also what was happening in the cockpit, which is very, very important to know what the pilots were experiencing and, uh, unfortunately, why this aircraft went down. Yes. Um, we've heard nothing in all the reports that we've been doing this morning about any kind of um, bomb or incident like that. We would have heard that by now, do you think, or is it still up in the air? Well, we'd have to see what happens with the, uh, the logs coming back from air traffic control. What did the pilots actually say to the yeah. controllers? Yeah. Uh, was there an, air, uh, an issue with the aircraft, a mechanical issue? Uh, we're not exactly sure, but that's why we have to put all these pieces together with the cockpit voice recorder, flight data recorder, transcripts, log books. We get all that information and they will paint the picture of what exactly went wrong with this you airplane. Did, you did say it was making a turn back when you It made a 20 degree the, turn, the that's correct. Path. So what can we take from that? It was trying to come back to the airport? Uh, obviously, yes. Yeah. They, yeah. they had said on the, uh, the one of the transcripts said that he had called the air traffic control and requested a return to the airport. Uh, they weren't very far out, only 13 minutes into the flight. Yeah. So he would have wanted to come back and land where he uh, took off from because it's the closest airport. The Java Sea is, I think, approximately 30 meters deep, I was reading. So the odds of retrieving the black box would be high, would you say? Oh, yes, very good. Okay. Because the, the pinger or the, the, it's actually a clicking sound that they're licking, li uh, listening for. Mm -hmm. Um, once it, it has a, what's called an underwater acoustic beacon. So that's the clicking sound. Uh, it's, a, it's a beacon that when it touches water, it starts emitting, emitting a clicking sound. And it can be picked up at one mile in all directions. So that way they'll be able to hone into it and figure out where it is. We appreciate you coming in and helping us make sense of this all. Great. Thanks for having me, Jeff. Okay. Aviation analyst Phil Dirty joining me.